Now we already know what Mahindra's big EV push will look like with the concepts based on the Inglo architecture. But the first of those EV SUVs is still two years away. So in the meantime, we have this, the Mahindra XUV400, which as the name suggests is the electrified version of the XUV300 and it'll take on the likes of the Nexon EV Max and the ZS EV. And so here we're diving in today at Mahindra's proving tracks outside of Chennai to see exactly what Mahindra has to offer in this segment, which is a fast growing one and one which seems to be right at the center of the EV sort of revolution in India. So now we'll quickly take you through what's changed for the XUV300 to become the XUV400. And as you can see from the copper highlights, that it's part of the XUV family of Mahindra SUV. So you have this copper Twin Peaks logo and these X motifs throughout the frontal fascia of the car. Of course, there's no grill anymore. And this has become a bit more angular. And again, those copper highlights, they are a recurring theme throughout the car. So you see it here as well and below here too. Now the headlamp cluster is the same as in the XUV300, but you see that there are no front fog lamps anymore. Now coming to the side, you notice a different design for the alloy wheels. Although the tyres are the same size as before. And again, you have a really bright, sort of vibrant shade of colour, like these greys and these blues and blacks. And they all seem to work quite well with these copper highlights. So that way, of course, the look may be a bit on the nose for some, but as it is, it's an attractive looking car. The copper highlights keep going to the side. And another big change, the XUV400 is not exactly the same dimensions as the XUV300. It's 200 mm longer, as you can see from this section. So the slightly ungainly rear that the XUV300 was quite criticized of is gone now. It's a much more proportionate look now, especially when you view it from this angle. The tail lamp cluster has changed. Now you have these uh, clear lens elements, although the basic design remains the same. And again, those cross copper motifs that you saw in the front, they're repeated in the tail lamps as well. The boot, of course, it looks, like I said, it looks a bit more proportionate than before. The bumper design has changed with these more angular elements and the boot itself is much larger now. That was another sort of complaint with the XUV300 that the boot wasn't quite as large, but as you can see, it's large. Now, this is something you don't see very often, but from converting the XUV300 to the XUV400, Mahindra has also changed the location of what would have been the fuel filler cap to here, the charging port here which means that when you are at a charging station, you don't have to back up and you know, it's a lot of hassle. You don't have to do that. You can just drive right in and charge through here, which is a nice touch. Now the XUV400 is powered by a 39.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. It's IP67 rated, which means you have some level of dust and water protection. As for charging the XUV400, you have three options as usual. You can use a DC fast charger, which will charge the battery to up to 80% in half an hour or you can put up an AC wall box at your home, which charges it in a relatively quick six and a half hours. Or of course, if you're stranded somewhere, you don't have access to any of those, you can still charge it from a three pin socket, which is a good option to have, but that'll still take you about 13 hours. Now with EVs, you're seeing stuff that you probably would have never seen in a small compact SUV before. For example, the spoilers you can see, it's actually a device to reduce drag so the air comes in from here and comes out from here something you would see in maybe a sports suv first you're seeing it in something like an xuv 400 now now as for the interiors of the xuv 400 they're pretty much a straight lift from what you get in the xuv 300 but of course there are some changes to start with you have this all black shade which looks nicer at least in our books than the sort of plain beige and black that you have in the combustion engine version. But the, some of the things that we don't like is these switches, which we think should have been changed to something a bit more modern. And similarly, you've lost some features. For example, you don't get dual zone climate control anymore. You don't get the steering modes anymore. But that said, the XUV400 is still reasonably uh, well equipped. You get auto headlamps, you get seven inch touch screen, you get height adjustable seats, a sunroof, um, these being the highlights. But aside from that, the XUV300 is one of the larger cars in this segment and that continues unchanged even here. So you have a great view out, you have good shoulder room here, comfortable seating and the windows are large. So that is not a problem at all. Now coming back to the features, we also would have liked maybe 
a digital instrument cluster you know with EVs and the bios of EVs being so technologically savvy that could have been an addition and this touch screen is an older unit so maybe that could have been updated but again for what is there is usable and you anyway have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay plus you have a wider range of connected car features so that should be another bonus. Now in terms of the way the XUV400 is built again it's very similar to the 300 you have the same pretty decent quality of plastics there aren't too many soft surfaces aside from the common touch points such as this bit here, this bit here. But you have this nice sort of weave to the steering wheel, this grip. The buttons, maybe they look a bit dull because they are the same color as the rest of the cabin. But they feel and function well enough. But probably the nicest bit of the XUV 400's cabin is this new gear shifter. It looks like it's from a much more expensive car. Feels nice to grip, it's got a rubberized feel to it. And as you can see, it functions with a nice click as well and you can choose pretty much everything from here. Now if you are a family who is looking for an EV then the XUV400 should definitely be on your radar simply because of the amount of space that it offers. It's significantly larger at least on initial impression than the Nexon EV. So you have as you can see quite a bit of legroom. Headroom is great especially with the scooped out roof. You have this wide bench so three abreast is not going to be an issue especially if the third passenger is a child. The floor isn't too high considering it is an EV. You have a hump but it's not too high. And again storage spaces there's quite a few. You have these cup holders here. You have large bottle holders. It's the same in the front with this large center console and even bigger storage pockets in the front doors. Now the only thing that we don't like in the back seat is probably the cushioning on the backrest. It's a bit too firm for our liking but again it's totally dependent on how you like it. And another nice touch which sort of breaks up the otherwise monotonous grey cabin are these nice uh, blue stitchings along the seats then and here. They sort of give you the slightly vibrant EV type feel which we quite like. Now the XUV300 is a 5 star rated car in terms of safety and I think that should carry over to a large extent in the XUV400. You get 6 airbags at least in the top variants. You get ABS, you get rear disc brakes. But other than that, uh, it should be a safe structure to begin with. Now Mahindra says that the XUV400 is the fastest accelerating car that you can buy in the mass market with a 0 to 100 time of 8.3 seconds. Now we can't put that claim to test but Mahindra also says that its top speed is 150 km per hour. We've just done that. In fact, we've seen an Odo indicated 160 at the high speed bowl at the Mahindra SUV proving grounds that we're at, where we're testing the XUV 400. Now you get three drive modes, fun, fast and fearless, and they progressively increase in performance. So in the fun mode, you have speed is limited to about 90, 95 kilometers an hour. Now the acceleration, the throttle response is a bit less brisk, and that progressively increases to 150 kilometers per hour in the fearless mode. And we must say that even in this very steep 40 degree ba banking, we did find that the XUV400 to be quite stable. Of course, there's not much noise apart from the wind buffeting that you can hear. It's an EV after all. But here at a steady 100, you notice that it's a very quiet place to spend time in. So high speed, long distances will be quite calming in this SUV. So even here, when we're on this quite steep banking, you notice that the car is straight. There's some movement, as you might expect, but again, it's quite stable for a car with a relatively short wheelbase on a high-speed ball such as this one. Now, of course, we are in a controlled environment of this test track, and these XUV400 that we are driving aren't exactly production ready. There's still some software work to be done on it. So, from what we've seen so far, the 400 seems like it'll be a competent city car pretty much like most EVs are. So in the fun mode, you have a decent amount of performance. It's perfectly enough for you to get around your daily maybe commute. And then when you want a bit more power, the fast mode too is helpful. Although we would have liked maybe the throttle response to be a bit less sharp as you progress through the mode. But other than that, it's a perfectly usable car in both those modes. It's got that steady sort of typical EV torque that you like so much and yeah so that pretty much makes it a very usable car in the city and in terms of how it rides and handles again it's typically like an EV you have that slightly stiff feeling through the suspension say over expansion joints or over 
pot holes and manhole covers but apart from that say on a smooth road such as this one it stays flat it stays level it stays well poised so in that way it is quite confidence inspiring now some of the things that we would have liked to have been better and these have sort of carried over from the XUV 300 is the feel from the steering there isn't too much feedback it's quite light so say when you're on a long corner such as this one you are sometimes second guessing what the car is doing but you have a good view out like you have in the XUV 300 you can see the edges of the bonnet so moving around in the city is not going to be an issue and similarly the braking now as you progress through the modes you get varying degrees of regen which we can't show you because the regen sort of gauge isn't exactly tuned as and we can't even tell you what the range sort of figure is like in the real world although we think about a 300 km range in the real world 300 350 is achievable but what we would have liked with the regen is that the transition between the braking and the regen could have been a bit smoother the throttle pedal feels a bit sharp when you apply it when you are switching over from regen to the physical brakes so coming to a complete halt easily is not very easy but apart from that the regen itself seems quite strong and you have this l mode which is quite useful it's typically what b mode would be in many of these evs and hybrids and as you can see we're coming to a complete halt it can do that and you don't have paddles to control the regen which makes this l mode extremely useful in the city so you can pretty much one pedal drive in the city just control your speed and deceleration through the accelerator which will make it even more easy and even more efficient to drive in the city now to go back to the way the xuv 400 handles there is good news here now we didn't like the steering but the body movements they are quite confidence inspiring as you can see the car there's not too much body roll mainly thanks to all the weight being below you and the car stays true to its line so like the recent spate of mahindra's the xuv 400 is again quite a nice car to drive now the xuv 400 only goes on sale by january of 2023 but given a choice would you pick one see we can't tell you exactly how efficient it is but with over 450 km of range even on the arr cycle there is reasonable usable real world range to be had from the car we think at least and we would have liked a few more features maybe at par with what you get in the xuv 300 but aside from that the car is spacious it's comfortable it's nice to drive and you have all the benefits that you look for in an ev in the xuv 400 so we think generally this should be another successful product from mahindra Mm-hmm.